everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. This video is dedicated to my golden member and uh, once again I want to express my gratitude for you all for supporting my channel. You know that I put a lot of effort, hard work in, hard work and you know everything that I have into this channel and for me sharing my studio time is something very personal and very intimate that I'm glad to do it with you. As you know, when I uh, share this studio time and I show you different type of painting technique that I use, I just uh, is an invitation for you inside my artistic process so you can kind of compare your artistic process with mine just to feel like a, an inspiration maybe and to see how similar or maybe how different our artistic process are. Last time, uh, the last month, uh, because I publish uh, one video per month, I wish I could do more, but you know I'm very busy, so for now this is what I can do. I started this project, a whimsical, abstract, colorful representation of natural environment, mostly focused on natural pattern, which is something that fascinated me. Not only when I take a when I paint or I draw, so it's really vivid inspiration, but also when I take a, uh, photos, right? It's something I'm always attracted by the tiny little things, the details of patterns in bigger landscape. So last time I painted with watercolors this beautiful colorful, uh, colorful mushroom. If uh, I don't know if you follow the video, if you want to go back and uh, rewatch it or watch it, maybe you painted them as well. Maybe you painted something completely different. As I told you, the idea is to create like a sort of a collage, so a multi-step project. So today I'm gonna paint a face too. I'm gonna add some more elements, probably leaves, flowers, biomorphic shapes that I want to include into that artwork, right? Then later on, I will take care of the background. Then we cut all the pieces. I will cut them and I will assemble them in a composition. So when I do this video, you can prep the materials and follow me and paint what I paint. Or you can just feel that we are in company in this virtual art studio. And while you look at what I do and you listen to what I say, you're free to paint and create your own things, right? Interpreted nature, natural environment, still life, whatever is the aspirations that really motivates you. You can watch the video and then paint on your own. You can watch the video just to have an inspiration and relax. And as I say, you can watch the video to paint with me. So for today's practice, I will still use a very good quality of watercolor paper, my watercolors, a couple of brushes, small and extra small, a pencil for drawing and at the end an extra fine sharpies or an extra fine micro markers or any brand that you have available. Um, maybe I'm gonna use two, like one extra fine and one even smaller depending. I'm still not sure because sometimes so this is why I leave the outlines at the end. You realize how much do you need and what do you need specifically after the project is almost done. So you can see it already in shape and with colors. So I'm gonna switch the camera and uh, you can paint with me. Okay, this was the page that I painted last time and I'm gonna build up upon this and I wanna kind of leave it here ne nearby so I can look at the color palette and be inspired. And now I'm gonna prep my second watercolor page. I'm going to use the pencil, do it as light as possible so I Apologize if you're not able to see the lines so much, but I need them to be extremely light. As I told you several times, when you use watercolor, you need to trace your lines light so they will be completely, they will disappear once you do the color, you, you paint it on top. I'm going to shape different type of leaves, different sizes as well. And I'm going to just do the outline. Everything else, such as the veins, the pattern, will happen at the end, after. I can do a couple of similar shades.
they are definitely only only spirit by nature but they don't have to be the exact replica because this is my own interpretation right so feel free to do uh the same maybe let's see Heart shape, smaller. Once again, we're going to try to use all the space as much as possible, leaving some gaps. So you're going to, I will feel comfortable then to cut them around. I'm going to also do a couple of like a few biomorphic shapes. They don't represent uh, anything specific, but maybe they can be put still, they can be part of the, um, uh, composition now that I have my line set my outline I'm going to start the painting I'm going to use a small brush and uh, as I did for the mushroom I'm not going to use a total realistic palette some inspiration by the greens the orange definitely but maybe even some blue pink and whatsoever who knows so I'm gonna start from the safest and then I'm gonna move like a more realistic and then I'm gonna move into um, a deeper exploration of colors now for what concerned the right amount of water it's really up to you I still want to have control in this case because I want to feel shapes specific shapes inside I like to see you see what I did like uh, if you get a little less water you will have an intense and more saturated color and I really love to see that transition between more saturated color and less if you want in less you can just redeep the brush just into the water and don't dip it again into the color you're gonna very gently barely touching the paper nice and soft to spread the color on the surface and then you're gonna play with other colors for example that you would like to mix on top of between now if you add a little more water because you like more of a like a different feeling like more watery just go for it and in that case it will probably bleed outside the line which is not a problem because probably is exactly what you were going for right so don't worry because then if your intention is like mine to cut those leaves you will be able to do so okay you will retrieve uh, basically the lines i'm playing around and see what happened i put some dark yellow now on top and then i let it go and blend on top of the blue and this beautiful and intense turquoise that i leave exactly like that now I'm gonna move on to another leaves and we're gonna switch completely the palette. So at the end, my intention and my goal is to have a really, a variety of colors, right? So I can decide how I want to uh, spread them out on the, in the final project, in this beautiful composition. And feel free to make any experiment with the colors that you like. Uh, maybe you have a, I don't know, say, oh, I'm curious to see what happens if I put this one on top of the other color, if I mix these two colors or whatever. Just feel like a curious and satisfy your curiosity. What is the worst thing that can happen that you don't like that color palette? And maybe you're not going to use the leaf or you're going to let it dry and paint something again on top and using a different color palette this time i really like to see this type of you know natural uh, uh, pattern right that the watercolor create on the paper once they meet you know the water and the other color i love it it's like a very natural and it's a little surprise right we, we cannot really plan it entirely very nice this palette i love this intense kind of 
red violet <clears throat> and I'm definitely going to use again. Maybe this time matching with something different. Also, I feel that it's so relaxing. And as I say, because I always, you know, teaching and I love, I do love, love teaching school. But as you can imagine, and the schedule is very uh, strict, right? I have class to class, sometimes back to back, uh, several classes per day. You have to teach a formal right, curriculum. There are so many standards and requirements that I need to fulfill. And uh, it is beautiful. It's really rewarding. Uh, sometimes it can be a challenge, right? Because you need to really be always extremely organized. At least uh, this is the way I teach. I like to really be very organized and um, this organization definitely helped me in being successful in teaching my classes and writing compelling curriculum but uh, sometimes I miss the opportunity to just uh, play around like I'm doing right now and indulging in my own creativity right in what I want to do in what I want to explore without a specific purpose but just for the love of doing it right and the relaxation and the feeling that i get by doing it uh, it's something really rewarding per se so if you are not super familiar with watercolor if you feel that you are not extremely good or whatever please don't be discouraged just remember that if we dedicate some time so even once per month because this video there are a little more like a uh, personal and they might be I don't know sometimes a little longer than other practice once again also you don't have to do it all the way you can divide the practice according to your own schedule and lifestyle but as I was saying the fact that we learn to dedicate sometimes just for ourselves something that we like to do or something that maybe it's out of our comfort zone right and it pushes our some you know pushes some boundaries some limits it's something extremely important and therapeutic that we should all learn how to do it and for many many years mostly you know my generation i was born in 76 so we were raised with a strong sense of duty uh, which is definitely, you know, important. I still feel that a sense of duty and a work ethics and be reliable, be efficient is important. But sometimes, you know, they didn't teach us to take care of ourselves emotionally and physically, right? That was always the after the duties, after performing our duty, after making sure that we have everything done, everything well done. And sometimes... Uh, at our own personal cost so i feel that being able to say okay i did what i have to do i gave my best now i'm taking some time so just for myself because this is exactly what i need and i know that afterward sometimes it's difficult just to grab the material and sit down but once you do it it's fantastic because you know that is extremely 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 beneficial so this uh, channel for me is also an opportunity to do that because I feel that because I want to and I need to record my weekly video, monthly video in this case, I have to set that material. It's the beautiful, the little push that I need to say, nope, today, even if I have other stuff to do. Because if you look around in the house, there is always something that, needs to be done in the house right something that needs to be clean and something that needs to be uh, put away or folded and you know i love to have my house nice and neat so definitely i do that too but sometimes being able to say no i can do that later because now i'm gonna sit down and it's gonna spend these 30 40 minutes painting just for myself that's that's good that feels good and it feels just right and let me tell you that uh, art really makes, made and makes my mental, like, and emotional health 
more valuable to me in the way that I'm more aware when I need this mental break. And this mental break that I'm taking through the art of practice are really beneficial because they allow me to perform better in other field when I need to perform and be extremely like, you know, efficient or whatever. So I wanna say that it's a circle, it's a full circle. It, love it definitely this is my palette i love it i love this the way that it's drying not super super loving this maybe i will do something very nice this one i'm very happy let's see this blue what happened it's another blue that i want to explore with some purple maybe we'll see beautiful 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 and in my creative world leaves can be really every color that i want see and switch to violet and see what happened sometimes we place analogous colors that if you remember they are they sit near next to each other in sequence on the color wheel sometimes like analogous sometimes we go a complementary so opposite side of the color wheel to see what happened And play a little bit and see let the water do its magic now for this one I want something super warm so we're gonna go back to our beautiful red violet we spread it out a little more, I want it very nice and rich and watery. I'm gonna switch up to a nice, beautiful orange. And start from the top, blend it. Some more and more water so they blend together very well gently filling the space I love that and now I'm gonna retrieve that hot pink and that and I will play with this on top of the orange the tip of the leaf and once again you can gently move around, right? Just like you're moving the water and then let the water and the colors do their magic. Beautiful. I'm gonna turn the paper like that just because as a left hand, I don't wanna risk to go over. And so I'm gonna work a little bit upside down. Let's see this green. It's been a while since I've used it. I'm gonna use this nice light green this time i'm gonna paint with the same green the leaf all of it let's see what happens if i mix this very light some sort of a peach color 
nice. I don't want to go over the whole thing, but I'm going to go maybe here and here. If you're more on the realistic, uh, you can start to feel inspired by the fall colors. And so you can have, you know, this lime green, yellowish, brownish, stuff like that. Probably I'm going to try, I will use more neutral and brownish for these biomorphic shapes. One lock leaves, let me see. I have warm and warm and warm, cold, 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 cold. So I'm going to do one more warm, probably something like that. So these two are of the same family. So I'm going to kind of paint them uh, similar. Is the same green, it's just that I scrub on the cake. This is how we call the, the you know, the colors in the palette. And so it looks more intense just because I scrub it a little more, you see. And then I tip the brush inside the water without retouching the color so I can kind of spread the color all the way. I'm gonna tip a little more, go, just water and spread it. It's beautiful because it comes so natural at one point, right? And you feel very confident, you do your experiment. Now I'm gonna take the same type of um, light peach that turn into almost a yellowish, yes. And you can do more, you can do whatever really whatever you want to just let uh make sure that you're expressing you know you're flowing go with the flow of your creativity and imagination that is not a rule you need to really enjoy and feel the joy when you look at what you're doing regardless of the outcomes of how the color blended or not for example in this one probably i would go back to this green watering pretty much and just go back over here to make this side a little darker and move it across only water and now with only water i'm gonna start to work over this line so we don't see one neat line but we see more like a radiant gradient shading i'm gonna bring it i want to have some of this green on top of the yellow and then back all the way there you go. And now I'm going to see, I'm going to let it dry and see what happened. I like to tap so you have that little bit of color. Tap it at all here to enhance it. Sometimes when they dry, some color can kind of turn them into a muted version of the color. Why? I like them to be extremely bright because I'm gonna work with extremely intense and bright color palette. So I'm gonna let them dry. And now you see, I think that probably in this one, I want some brightness. So I'm gonna tip in the same green that I use for this one. And I'm gonna just go over to warm up these leaves and make that transition a little more intense because this is how I like. I want them to see. I went outside, as I say, it is not a problem at all because we're gonna cut them so I can reshape the leaves the way I want. Now I'm gonna include the, some of brownish and some more, you know, more neutral and earth tone. Playing with a dark brown, light brown. And remember, as I told you in many other practice with the watercolors, if you do not have as many colors as I have, remember that you get to mix. So you can even prep a little plate for you nearby where you can kind of mix the color to make a color darker. You can mix it with a little bit of black already or maybe for the brown with some extremely dark blue. If you, have a, if you don't have a gray, you can mix a little bit of uh, black, just a tiny bit on the white. And then you can use that gray and mix it with other color and it will give you many different tones, right? 
let's see let's do this brown but i'm gonna mix it with a little bit of that beautiful red so we're gonna have let's see what happened nice beautiful very intense maroon or burgundy beautiful spread it around probably will go here then i'm gonna take some dark yellow and i'm gonna go over here and blend it on top to light up the color and this shape turn the page again so i don't go over i'm gonna go with yellow this time set the base and i'm gonna use a violet and since the yellow and the violet are opposite on the color wheel, they are complementary, it will give you a brownish color. When you mix a complementary, this is what happens. You will have a brown, different type, of course. So the brown that I will get from yellow and violet, it's very different from the brown that I will get by mixing together um, red and green, for example, right? So this is definitely lighter and warmer. Now I'm going to clean my brush on this one so I'm not picking any other color. I'm just going to set the foundation with this medium brown. And then maybe I'm going to go back to a green and mix it. And maybe a little bit of the dark red that I liked so much. So when you like a color and you feel good when you see that color appearing on the paper, use it. Use it more. Keep using it, experimenting. Now, remember that we have to let this dry completely and then we will be able to do the outlines and every patterns that we want to do if any and uh, we are going to kind of touch the paper gently with the finger to see if they are dry for example this leaf is dry this leaf is dry this one is dry this one is dry this one is almost dry except for here this one is dry and this one is dry the rest needs to dry up so i'm gonna move the paper in a direction that is comfortable for me to start working on without ruining the rest and i'm gonna skip this one because it's still a little wet please do what you have to do on your paper according on what leaf is dry and ready for you to work on and which one is not right and if you have to wait, just you can watch what I do or pause the video. Wait until you have the opportunity to work with the extra fine Sharpie. So I'm going to have fun now. I'm going to trace the outline and the central line. And then I'm going to create the pattern inspired by the leaves, natural pattern. But sometimes I will go maybe... A little overboard so I will do my own pattern and I suggest you to do the same in my other videos that I share once per week you can find so many different inspiration for patterns and design and different type of lines curved straight diagonal um, and I saw that many of you and I'm so very happy when that happened they share their creation in our uh, Facebook group. And some of you, you know, actually all of you are doing fantastic. They are creating fantastic things. And they are also very personally different from my own. And also from, you know, 
other people who are using my tutorial, which is fascinating to see that the same tutorial, the same lesson, the same practice that can have so many different outcomes, right? You see, oh, only this activity to repeat uh, just to over and over, it's already like uh, so soothing and therapeutic, more than we believe and more than we think it is. Because we push our brain, gently force our brain to stay completely present, completely focused on what we are doing and completely connected on our hand, right, on the paper, which is being really present and really really mindful so for this one i won't do the lines in the center and i'm gonna do something a little different and see what happens and once again we make experiment and we try sometimes we're gonna love what we have sometimes that we want and that's it and it's okay we don't need to use that in the case that we don't like something we can redo it and make it different I always tell my students that the best practices, the most effective, are the ones that we fail and we really messed up because then we learn, right? And uh, although my students are still, also because the message that might come from other uh, sources, from the society itself, or from maybe sometimes a parent, um, or other teachers like, oh, you must have the best result, everything looks so, which uh, it will happen eventually, but we should embrace a little more this uh, culture of mistakes, right? We learn through mistakes. So this is the way that humans did uh, since the very beginning of our civilization. They had an idea, they tried that idea, sometimes it worked, but most of the time it failed. And they have to try it again, making adjustment and modification to have a finally the working piece, right? And it should be the same. So my students, uh, some of them are really, really afraid of making mistakes and make, you know, on the paper as well. And I always kind of reassure them uh, when they come to me and say, can I have another paper? Because this one happened, you're saying, that is perfect. It is exactly what we need. Remember that this is a practice and practice are meant to be full of mistakes. So you can learn from those mistakes and you can do better and better, right? Why not? Here I'm gonna try maybe something even different. I'm gonna create these uh, straight diagonal lines and then we're gonna fill that space inside. Now I'm doing them upside down, so it's a little tricky, but it is what it is because I really don't wanna mess up the other leaves that are drying. So now I'm kind of uh, connecting uh, the two corners, mm, very nice, uh, and created this geometrical pattern. Let's see if I'm more comfortable like that, let me tell you. Left-handed, left-handed. Now I totally understand why Leonardo da Vinci say, no, this is too much. I'm not gonna move my paper around mostly with the type of pen that he have to write. So I say, no, I'm gonna just learn to write backward, Nero. Well, but no, you know, we're not Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> I'm not, I'm gonna tell you, I'm telling, I'm, I'm taking this um, lettering and calligraphy class in college, which is uh, really beautiful and very relaxing. Also challenging because we have to use the flat pen with the metal tip and calligraphy pen and something like that, right? And I'm left-handed, so you can imagine with the ink, I will mess up my paper. So after many different trials, I figured it out that for me, I need to um, work almost upside down. So I am writing upside down, which is a tremendous coordination exercise for my brain 
but it's not the easiest things. Now, we did the Roman, very linear. We did Italics, pretty like foundational, right? Traditional. Italics flourishing a little more sophisticated. Um, then we did the Oncio, which is basically the Celtic type of uh, calligraphy. And now, and I loved it. And now we are doing black letters, which is basically Gothic. And because of the way that the strokes have to be done, I really need to turn that paper around several times for each letter. And, you know, it's been a, an experience. Let's say it that way. Very kind of, really kind of complicated, more complicated than I expected. This one still not. I'm going to do probably this one. Moving this way, though. I'm sorry, I'm giving you a headache, probably moving this paper around so many times. But because I have a goal for this practice, I really don't want to ruin the leaves and start again. Because I want to start then to build up more element than will be added in the final project. So... Here again, I'm going to do a line in the middle. This time we're going to go soft. And I think I'm going to curve those lines maybe in this direction. So And for the line as well, if your lines don't look like mine or that they, they're not super like uh, perfect, they have some imperfections, some of them are closer, some of them are farther apart, there is a little overlapping. That's the beauty, right? And the personality of the piece. So please kind of embrace it. So in this one, I'm going to do some nice, smooth, uh, gently curved lines, one side and also the other. And then I will build a pattern on each one. You know, and na nature inspires me and us all. This is a little wet, so I need to... What happened when you use the uh, Sharpie on wet? That There you go. It will stop working. And so we are going to... I don't care about this space because I know that I'm cutting uh, the leaves. So I don't need this. I'm not going to use this uh, space. 
probably I should have waited a little longer. And here, I think I'm gonna do a beautiful pattern. I'm gonna create some dots, more or less equidistance. They are not measuring them or counting them. I'm just going, you know, working with the space and spreading them out. So once again, just go with the flow. These are all kind of, uh, yes, yeah, so they feature some geometry, but overall they are. Um, and then I'm gonna do the connection. And don't make them look all the same, just have fun and connecting, don't overthinking. You can double like that. You connect to those dots in a, any way that you like. I'm gonna just make uh, the dots, some of them, a little bigger, like uh, to reconnect uh, with that same type of pattern that I created on one of the mushrooms, and I really loved it. If you like them uh, super small, that they kind of disappear with the lines, you can leave them super small once again. This is our studio time, so as artists, uh, we are free and able to make any choices that we want. I really like it. This one now should be dry and this one as well. So we're gonna proceed to the last two outlines and patterns. Once again, I'm gonna do an ondulated line and uh, probably this one I'm gonna replicate this pattern and on this one I'm gonna replicate this pattern. So we have some kind of repetition. We will have some at the end in my final. I will have elements that they kind of call to each other because they are connected, some of them for color palette, some other for the type of design, right? And then there will also be some contrast. So the final harmony and unity of the piece will be made by not only the nature, the unity of the subject, like natural, natural subjects such as leaves and mushrooms and uh, natural pattern biomorphic shapes but also by the type of the design and the pattern inside and also the type of the color palette and of course the unity in the media because I've been using uh, watercolors and sharpie basically to do the the pattern for the background because I need a, a background right where I will display and uh, glue all of this element I need to think about it I might use a mix and media paper maybe, or acrylic paper, um, so I can paint the background with acrylic. Painting the background with acrylic, we'd add, we add another media, so make an, another texture. So we'll make the piece very textured and create another level, like, you know, of interest, another conversational point of the piece 
and we'll see. And now we're gonna connect, 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 connect. And connect on the other side. Nice and relaxing, really love it. So the pattern are busy, but not too much. So I can still see the beautiful color palette underneath and the magic that happens when watercolor mixed um, with uh, between each other with each other so now these are biomorphic shapes i don't know exactly probably i'm thinking and that will be at the bottom as sort of the rocks uh, of earth element so you can really do any type of pattern that you would like on those maybe there could be also some connection with the the who knows the top of the mushroom and once again i don't worry if they are not super perfect you know the lines with the uh, the painting because you will cut along the black lines now let me see what I can do in this one I probably I'm gonna start with this type of pattern sometimes you can just have the shape of something inspire you right and then probably I'm gonna do some nice tiny little dots pretty busy in the first three lines and then a little less busy going down So you spread them remember don't make them look geometrically perfect so don't make them equidistant but play a little bit with the proximity and the number and the quantity there you go looks like a little potato <laughs> then on this one maybe i'm going to do some bigger circle that i will color inside with the black so we will have a reference to the pattern that i did in some of, on some of the mushroom after all you know like i connect very much the mushroom and the earth right maybe in this case instead of to fulfill them entirely with black I can color them inside with a pattern of very, very uh, dense lines. I'm gonna just grab super quickly a regular sharpie. So I'm gonna do it a little more precisely and easily. I'm fulfilling this frame that I created around this circle. 
So I'm doing a little something opposite that I did on the mushrooms, which is great because we have a reference, but also variety, right? Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Nice, I like it, very fun. I'm gonna probably add one more here and then go in a couple of time like that. And now maybe, maybe, maybe I can do this type of pattern again, which I love it. I'm gonna use, since I have my regular uh, tip sharpie and makes my dots uh, easier to do because I just have to tap and press a little bit, tap and press, then I put it away. And with this one, I can start the connection, connect the dots. It's something so simple, just like dots and lines can give us a, such a beautiful pattern. And it's up to you how simple or how complicated you want it because you can just do one connection between them instead to do multiple connection or you can do as I'm doing, uh, connecting them in many, many different directions and creating a more like a, a intricate pattern. It's really, really up to you. I'm very pleased uh, by these sessions together. I feel definitely, you know, tranquil, inspired. I feel at ease, I feel comfortable, and I'm very happy that I could dedicate some time to myself. Now we have one last at a time, you one over here. We don't wanna forget it. Huh? Hmm, probably I will just do tiny little dots, which is one of the most uh, um, tedious, I would say, and annoying, because sometimes you feel a little sense of discomfort when you do it, because you tend to lose it, mostly when you are at the end of a long sessions of painting and thinking what you're going to create. But it is also a taste, like a test, sorry, a test and a challenge for my patients. So sometimes mostly at the end of a project, we feel that little rush to complete and do it. We should kind of force ourselves to stay on that a little longer, a little more with something like this. So when you have to be extremely focused, so people think about, oh, they are just dots. Let me tell you, if you lose it and you start to do it too fast, you're gonna lose that pattern and it's gone so i'm gonna make more and more like the proximity of my dots i want it to be much more like a, uh, intense and busy over here and then little by little i'm gonna start to spread out uh, my little dots so creating a sense of value darker and lighter also through a pattern So I'm supporting the color, the colors that I used before to create that. Voila. And now we are all done for the second step of our practice. I'm going to switch the camera so we can uh, say goodbye. Okay, friends and golden members, this studio time, it's over and these are the leaves and the biomorphic shapes that I painted with you today. I really am really pleased about this beautiful and intense color palette that support and enhance the color palette and the change of color that we see in nature in different seasons. This one was the first subject, so the starting point. And now, as you see, I'm building up other elements that will go together. Next month, I'm going to probably... Um, 
cut work on the background and deciding what type of background I want to have is still watercolors, acrylics, I don't know, I really need to think about it. I might try both and then we decide and then I will gently and carefully cut all the pieces and we can play together with the composition. Once again, thank you so much for supporting my channel with the membership. It means so much to me. Keep sharing, keep sending feedback, comment, keep practicing in your own way, shorter, smaller, different, whatever. Join our Facebook group. Remember subscribing. If, well, of course, you're already subscribed, but spread the word and invite other people to subscribe so we can build a beautiful, beautiful virtual community. I wish you the best of the day and life and weekend and whatever, and I see you all very soon. Ciao!